Hello everyone, recently I started learning how to make PCBs at home and I must say it has been a fun experience. There were a lot of trials and errors involved but I no longer have to debug per poor circuits for hours or order PCBs online with $20 shipping. The only problem is that I cannot drill holes properly. I mean just look at these poor things. So I decided to make this mini 3D printed drill press with adjustable speed control. It costs about $20 if you do not include the price of the 3D printer. And here's a video of it working. First thing I did was search for existing drill press models on Thingiverse. If there exists a good design, you could basically remix it or use it as an inspiration. This design right here is perfect. But I couldn't find the parts in the right size from this build. And also I wanted to add some more functionality to it. So I decided to reverse engineer the model and proceed from there. I downloaded the STL files. In Fusion 360, I did insert mesh. then reduce the mesh, then convert the mesh. At the end, you should have a solid object that you can modify to your heart's content. I mostly adjusted the size of the hex bolt heads and threads. Anyway, here are the 3D models. I put them to print while I moved on to the next step. Now for the speed adjusting circuit, I used a 555 timer to generate the PWM signal with variable duty cycle and fixed frequency. This video right here explains how the circuit works in details, so check that out. I fed the output of that 555 timer to a MOSFET which acts like a switch to turn on the motor. The diode is connected across the motor to remove any inductive kickback. And the circuit is powered by 12 volt power source. I try out the circuit on a breadboard. I had to switch out some parts and try some variation to get the proper output, but it worked. Here's the signal on the oscilloscope. And here it is diving the motor. Since I made the schematic on EZEDA, from there I converted it to PCB and did the routing on two layers. This is what the PCB looks like. I printed out the traces on a shiny paper, transferred it to the copper clad board, and fixed any broken or missing traces. Then I etched it in ferric chloride and drilled the holes. After that, I started soldering all the components on the board. And when I power it up, it worked perfectly. Now let's gather all the parts for assembly. Check the instructable for a detailed list of parts. Here are the 3D printed parts after being cleaned. This is the motor and chuck. And these are the screws and nuts. First take the base plate and run two hex bolts through it and tighten with hex nuts. Insert another hex nut and slide the depth stopper. This will allow you to change how deep the drill goes. Take another hex bolt and twist it into the lever. Tighten with the hex nut. Use another hex nut and washer and slide it into the mount through the gear. On the other side, tighten it using hex nut and washer. Use another hex bolt as an arm for the lever.
screw in two more nuts onto the hex poles going into the base plate and place the mount body. Use some super glue to keep things in place. You should still be able to rotate the lever arm freely. Mount the chuck onto the motor and then put the motor inside the motor bracket. Tighten it using machine screws and nuts. Take the slider and mount four screws through the holes as shown and slide the PCB into it. Tighten it using small nuts. Mount the motor bracket and make sure to insert the spring at the bottom. Finally slide in the slide to the mount and attach the spring to the center body. And it's ready. I inserted the right size drill bit into it and connected it to a full power source and got started on this failed PCB I had lying around. As you can see the holes are pretty good. Overall I was pretty satisfied with the build. It looked cool and was miles better than using a handheld Dremel. If you decide to make it let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.